off. Yeah, like, yeah, tell yeah. me what's pissing you off. Trying to find uh, Natalie a boyfriend or a guy. Who'd you hear this from? People. No, I want to know who told Natalie. you. So Love is seriously messy and modern dating is the absolute worst. But I do not pity the contestants of Love is Blind who try to get through the physical facade of dating and straight to the personality. That doesn't seem to stop dating drama from happening though because the it couple of the season is more of an it love triangle which is more of an it love square. It's all super messy but we'll dive right into it. On top of what little we know about Shane, his early life and what got him into being one of the most talked about Love is Blind contestants this season. Today we're covering Love is Blind season 2 contestant Shane Jensen, so be warned there are spoilers ahead. Comment down below who you think should be featured next on future episodes of Where Are They Now? And please don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more content just like it. Let's get into it, shall we? Shane Jensen was born in Wisconsin and grew up in a small town. He became a real estate agent and relocated to Chicago, Illinois. Aside from being a real estate agent, however, Shane is also a certified personal trainer and there's no question about that with his muscular physique. He worked for a few years as a sales and fitness consultant as well as a personal trainer in West Chicago before finally settling into real estate. Despite being loved by his family and friends for his high energy, bubbly personality and positive attitude, Shane has been unsuccessful in love and dating throughout his 20s. Finally feeling fed up by his lack of ability to find the right woman to settle down with, he decided to enter into the ring and audition for Netflix's Love is Blind. Basically, if you haven't watch the show, Love is Blind is a reality television show where attractive singles meet one another but they have no idea who anyone looks like. The premise is that the contestants are supposed to find connection with one another through personality alone, removing physical attraction from the meeting in hopes of creating more meaningful relationships. So when Shane entered into the show, he used it as an effort to try and find the one, someone who he loves in a way that's deeper than physical attraction and is much more real. And it seems that he did, but not without some serious drama. The couple get off on an insanely rocky start. Shane and Natalie Lee, who is also from Chicago, had some conflict when Shane mistook Natalie for another woman, namely Shayna, with whom he entered into a love triangle with. Shayna herself had developed feelings for Shane and even spoke vocally about her hesitancy to pair with another man, despite knowing that Shane was also linked to Natalie. Despite the massive blow up that occurred on screen where Shayna accused Shane of being in a fake relationship with Natalie, even though she herself became engaged to another contestant later on in the show. Sadly for Shayna and her beau, they didn't end up working out and she decided to return the ring back to him that he gave to her for an engagement. But for Shayna and Natalie, well it seems like they're still going strong. At the end of the series, Shane proposed to Natalie despite their rocky start. After their engagement, Shane and Natalie met face to face before they went on a retreat together in Mexico with the rest of the engaged couples from Love is Blind season 2. When asked about his directive with joining the contestants on the show, Shane stated quote, I came here to find find a wife. I cannot wait to make it official with her. Natalie, for her part, told producers, meeting Shane today, it absolutely was the best day of my life. I can't wait to see him again and spend the next chapter of our lives together. 1000 chapters of our lives together. Now we have to figure out how we work as a couple in the real world, where there are distractions. Meeting my parents, that's going to be interesting. I love the way I feel right now, I'm so confident in us, and I'm so excited for our marriage and everything else that's about to come. Despite seemingly coming together, finally with the engagement, Engagement. Now that the two budding lovebirds have physically met for the first time, their troubles are only just beginning. Rifts and cracks in the relationship started forming when Natalie expressed displeasure at Shane for eating in bed. She thought it was gross. And the couple got into another argument. This is all within the first 24 hours of seeing each other in person, by the way. When Natalie asked Shane if he thought she was beautiful and he accused her of fishing for compliments. The question upset Shane, who told Natalie that he didn't appreciate her sarcastic jokes about him. Quote, honestly, you got to stop doing that to me. I'm trying to have a conversation. Are you fishing for compliments? Stop. Have a normal conversation. You're making it much harder than it is. You joke a lot. It kind of gets a little old after a while. I'm sorry, but it's true. I guess it's good to get this out of the way now, but geez, don't hold your breath about a stable future for the couple if they're already at each other's throats during what is supposed to be the honeymoon period of a budding romance. Later in the retreat, Natalie also told Shane that she noticed more differences between them when he was around his friends from Love is Blind. 
offline. Quote, when you're with your guy friends, it's on a whole other level. I think in that way, we're different people. I don't think we have to work on it. It's just something I have to get used to. She said also, it is who you are, it's fine. Shane then told Natalie about how he didn't like the way she saw their relationship. Quote, you gotta give our relationship a little more credit. You joke a lot about our relationship, but how often do you say how good it is? Natalie then responded, quote, why do I have to? Why do we have to talk about how great it is with other people? Natalie and Shane then realize how different they are when it comes to talking about their relationship. Shane said, quote, I brag all the time about us, to which Natalie responded, I want to, but it's just not my style. Once the season was over, the two didn't follow each other on Instagram for the longest time, and many assume that once the cameras were shut off, the two decided to call it quits on their relationship. But then, Shane posted to his Instagram about how much he appreciated his television partner. Quote, to say I had a crazy week is an understatement. As I reflect on the pods and my time in Mexico, I made some great connections and lifelong friends. I want to make sure everyone knows that Natalie is an incredible woman with a huge heart, and I hope everyone stays tuned to see how it all unfolds. I wouldn't trade my time on this wild ride for anything. He captioned this to photos of the two in sweet moments with one another. While both Shane and Natalie have not come forward as to whether or not they're still in a relationship, they did follow each other on Instagram, and this new post seems to hint that whatever animosity may have been there before, the hatchet has been buried. If they do decide to marry though, we know that there will be tons for the new couple to talk about. While on the show, Shane showed his Wisconsin roots by stating his want for their wedding to feature streams of endless old fashioned cocktails and a cheese curd based menu. The old fashions are a cocktail that hails from Wisconsin and is a nod to Shane's late father who really enjoyed the drink. Wisconsin is also famous for its cheese production, but Natalie said, quote, my entire family is lactose intolerant and doesn't drink. Yikes. To that, Shane had to say, quote, oh boy, in Wisconsin, all they do is drink. This is going to be a wild wedding. Viewers won't know until Friday's finale if Jensen and Lee are actually going to get married. Audiences have already met his mother during episode 8 when Lee was trying on wedding dresses at Genevieve's bridal couture in Deer Park. While having to wait until Friday seems like an impossible task, only time will tell if the two actually make it out of this season alive and with their relationship intact. Their social medias aren't revealing anything, and if they are together, their initial ploy to not follow each other to throw the audience off the trail was absolutely brilliant. Fair warning, major spoilers for Love is Blind season 2 here, so do not watch this video if you don't want the whole season to be spoiled for you. Natalie Lee and Shane Jansen had a staggeringly explosive final episode. The couple set their sights on engagement and were considered by every other couple to be the pairing with the most staying power. While they had their small spats in Mexico, which obviously they would as they get to know one another, the couple really seemed to get along. Then, the night before they were to be married, the couple had an explosive fight and some hurtful words were exchanged. Today we get into Natalie Lee, if she's still with Shane and where she is now. Today we're covering Love is Blind Season 2 contestant Natalie Lee. Tomorrow though, you decide. Let us know in the comments down below who you think we should cover in future episodes. And please don't forget to like this video for more content just like it. Let's get into it. There isn't a lot of background information on Natalie Lee and who she was as a person before her debut on reality television, but I'll give all the details that we do know. Living in Chicago, Illinois, Natalie is a consulting manager, which basically means that she bridges the gap between clients and management to make sure that changes are made within a company based on performance reviews given by customers. She's 29 years old as of now, and that's basically all we've got. Oh, and she also has irritable bowel syndrome, which she's told us a few times. During her run on Love is Blind season 2, she and Shane were easily the couple everyone had their eyes on, especially as it became more of a love triangle with Shayna in the mix. Having to choose between the two women, Shane had a few blunders along the way before he finally chose Natalie over Shayna. He tells Shayna the reason he didn't choose her is because she didn't profess her love for him fast enough, and I guess Natalie felt more emotionally available. The two got along really well while on the pods, and in an Entertainment Tonight interview, Natalie revealed that the reason she felt so drawn to him was because, quote, a lot of it was the assurance he gave me. From the very beginning, he said it was going to be me, but it was also the loyalty he had to his family and his kind heart. Underneath all of them, he's such a kind person. While that quote is sweet on the outside, I do think that maybe we should consider why assurance was the first word she chose. A lot of people seem to think that their relationship is a little off, due in part to Natalie's avoidant attitude. 
While being avoidant isn't a bad thing, meaning that physical affection or sweet words aren't as important to you, it is an attachment style that directly conflicts with someone who requires that type of assurance in a relationship. And I think a lot of their issues as a couple was due to their weird miscommunications when it came specifically to reassurance. Shane wanted reassurance with compliments and praise, while Natalie didn't gush about their relationship nor compliment him like Shane wanted her to. The way that both individuals seem to communicate their love is so conflicting and is the subject of a large part of their fights as the season moves forward. So I don't know, just kind of some food for thought. I also found it very interesting that she chose to lead why she initially liked Shane with assurance when that ends up becoming their main conflict. Anyways, so the season starts to near the end with the sentiment of the couple, despite their rough patches, going forward with the marriage at the end of the season. And then in the finale episode, everything went to sh The night before the wedding, although we as an audience are privy to it, Natalie and Shane have a massive fight. As the episode airs, we hear Natalie state, quote, I'm nervous, I'm stressed. Last night, Shane and I got into a fight, it was a really bad one, and Shane said some hurtful things to me. She then sobs while speaking about their fight, and it's really obvious how in distress she is about the whole thing. While they have had fights before, this one felt kind of different. Shane was almost unwilling to talk about it. It was revealed by Natalie later that Shane told her he hated her and that she was quote, the worst thing to happen to me, while also threatening not to get married. Those are some insanely powerful words, and while he stated that he still hopes they get married, it doesn't change the fact that Natalie and Shane have some massive issues to work out, whether it's before or after a wedding. After the fight, Shane apologized and the couple decided to move forward with their marriage and make that commitment to one another. Prepping for the wedding was very sweet, and I kinda love Natalie's dad so much. You can genuinely tell how much he cares for her and wants the best for his daughter. Honestly, although Natalie has issues displaying her affection for someone, you can tell that she's a loyal person. She has been stuck by Shane even after he stumbled with Shayna, she stuck with him throughout all of those fights, even after he told her he hated her, she still agreed to get married. But while I think Natalie is loyal, that doesn't mean that she's a doormat for people to walk all over. And so on the day of the wedding, after Shane had said I do, Natalie walked away from the wedding. She chose not to marry Shane, and by leaving him at the altar, she chose herself and her own happiness over a marriage that ultimately was beginning with a lot of unresolved issues. In my opinion, she chose right. They needed more time as a couple before making the big decision, and reality television means that they can't offer that time to see if they truly do match with one another. Natalie also stated afterwards in an interview that she felt she made the right decision, especially after re-watching the show, that she felt she wanted more time. I also think that threatening to end a marriage during a fight could have been a serious final straw for Natalie. As someone who is so loyal, I can't imagine a relationship being threatened right before the wedding as a sign of anything good to come as time goes on. That's a major sign of inconsistency. Natalie even stated, quote, before our fight, I was 100% sure I was going to marry him. But saying that you hate someone, telling them you're the worst thing that's ever happened to them, those cannot be unintentionally said. I just got to the point where I just emotionally could not do it anymore. So there you go, loyalty doesn't mean being okay with putting up with such harsh words. Natalie understands her worth and having those words hurled at you and then getting married the next day would have been a stupid decision on Natalie's part. So, wedding over. Shane and Natalie ultimately decide not to get married, but does that mean that they can no longer be together? Not really. There's nothing really stopping them from dating just because they chose not to get married. It seems like based on both of their Instagrams and subsequent interviews, however, that Shane and Natalie chose not to reunite or get back together. When speaking with Entertainment Tonight, Natalie described watching their relationship play out on TV as, quote, really hard to see knowing the outcome of it. And yesterday, Shane posted a heartfelt message to his own Instagram stating that he felt stronger learning from the mistakes he made while on the show. He didn't explicitly state anything about whether or not he and Natalie are dating at all, but that's probably super intentional given that there's still one more episode to go, the recap. In the recap is likely when they'll reveal if they're still dating, but my prediction is, don't get your hopes up. So now that Natalie and Shane are no longer a thing, a lot of fans seem to think that maybe it's now time for Shane to slide in with Shayna, the other woman in their love triangle. On our previous video about Shane, a few commenters shared that same suspicion. One person stated, quote, I wouldn't be surprised if Shane is now dating Shayna. Good thing Natalie didn't marry him. He's a walking meme and an immature guy. So are there any hints that Shane has moved on to Shayna? Well, that rumor is pretty clearly answered in Shane's Insta post. 
He stated, quote, to put some rumors to rest, Shayna and I are cordial and have hung out in group gatherings with the cast, but we have never had nor will ever have a romantic relationship. I wish her all the best. I think this paragraph was to put cheating rumors to rest and solidify that the love triangle was over before the proceedings of the marriage. It was the right thing to do, although it does make it a bit sad knowing that reason why Shane and Natalie can't work is due to their mismatched love languages and inability to properly communicate with one another. Another hint as to why I think they aren't together anymore is that Natalie is absolutely out there living her best life solo. Natalie's Instagram documents solo travel expeditions to sunny vacays with girlfriends. She went to Vietnam, to Hong Kong, all without Shane. To me, that's a clear indication of someone moving on from heartbreak and attempting to find themselves again. In more recent posts, she seems to be back in Chicago where both she and Shane live, but her former fiance hasn't made any appearance on her Instagram outside of Love is Blind promotional posts. That was until about an hour ago when she replicated Shane's sentiment of not regretting their relationship, even if it didn't have its fairy tale ending. Both parties seem to hold a lot of love and respect for one another, but sadly, I think it just wasn't meant to be. Kyle, I can't marry you. Fair warning, major Love is Blind season two spoilers ahead. Shayna Hurley, the other woman in the Love is Blind season two love triangle with Shane Jansen and Natalie Lee. A lot of people thought that they were going to be the ones to end up with one another, especially when Shane said her name instead of Natalie's to Natalie's face earlier in the season. But Shane ultimately decided to pursue Natalie because Shayna wasn't able to commit fast enough for him. So what is Shayna up to now? Did she find her own beau? And now that her season is over, has her relationship proven more successful than Shane and Natalie's? Today we're covering Love is Blind season two contestant Shayna Hurley. Tomorrow though, you decide. Let us know in the comments down below who you think we should cover on the next episode of Where Are They Now? And please don't forget to hit that like button for more content just like this. Much like a lot of other reality television contestants, there's not much information about them before they actually enter the spotlight. There is some stuff, however, so I'll just say what we know. Shayna Hurley is also a Chicago native, much like the other members of her love triangle, Natalie and Shane. She's a freelance hairstylist, and her primary reason behind going on to Love is Blind was to find an honest and loyal partner. She's very religious too, constantly bringing up God and Christianity as a focal point within her daily life. Featured on her Instagram profile is also a scripture story highlight where she basically just quotes Bible verses. She really stressed wanting honesty in a partner when she was profiling her perfect match, so I guess we can speculate that previous partners had issues with lying, but that's also kind of just gossip because so little is known about Shayna. So honesty is what she wants, but was Shayna herself honest during her season of Love is Blind? Absolutely not. Acting as a quasi villain, she currently has the comments on her Instagram limited to friends only, which I think tells you a lot about how people perceive her. When she first entered the pods, she hit it off with Shane. The two talked a ton and tons of fans were led to believe that Shane would choose Shayna in his decision on whom to marry. In one episode, Shane even mistook Natalie for Shayna when they were speaking in the pods in a moment that has been memed to hell and back for its cringeworthiness. Once it became clear to Shayna though that she wasn't going to be picked, she awkwardly defaulted to her second choice, Kyle. Shayna and Kyle had gotten along really well except for one major thing, religion. Shayna, as I mentioned before, is devoutly Catholic and although Kyle was raised religious, he identifies as an atheist. When asked about this difference in lifestyles, Kyle clearly stated, quote, Shayna has extreme views on religion, and I have extreme views on religion. I could definitely fall in love with Shayna, but we're such polar opposites, and I don't think either of us is going to change each other, and it scares me. Kyle being Shayna's second pick is also painfully obvious throughout the whole show. When he proposes to her at the end of 10 days in a pod, which, okay, side note, come on guys, can we really just be real for a second? They only get 10 days of hanging out without seeing each other before they get ready to be married. No wonder the show has such a terrible success rate. There's like zero room for genuine connection, even with the whole premise of not seeing each other's faces. But anyways, when Kyle proposes to Shayna on the 10th day, she reluctantly agrees. Like you can kind of see the thought process in her head of, well, I guess if I have to kind of thing, it's just weird. Once they finally properly meet face to face and get to go on their retreat to Mexico, the religious issues bubble back up to the surface again, and this time it more seriously needs to be addressed. 
During the retreat, Shana expressed her concerns over their religious differences. Quote, do I want to have the conversation with Kyle about our differences? Yes, no. It's one of those things where it's like, you're preparing for the worst, hoping for the best, but you don't want to hear the answer, but you know the answer. She's obviously flipping back and forth about, about the whole thing, and honestly, I think that quote pretty much summed up how her and Kyle's relationship ended. Shayna requested that they spend their first night in separate rooms, and while obviously it has to do with modesty and Christianity and saving oneself from marriage, I also like, apart from religion, I kind of get it, and was a little unsettled by Kyle's response. He acted like it was so weird and confusing, but I'm not personally religious, and I probably want the same thing. I mean, they've known each other for only 10 days. She's still feeling complicated about the love triangle. She just saw what this dude looks like, and even if she were head over heels in love with him, again, 10 days of talking. Why is she the weird one in this situation? Whatever, rant over. Anyways, it was never gonna work out because Shayna was still trying to actively sabotage Natalie and Shane's relationship as she was gearing up to marry Kyle. She tried to set Natalie up with a different guy and also told Shane again that she still has feelings for him. Obviously, Natalie wasn't too happy about this woman trying to set her up with another man a few days before she was set to be married. And obviously, Shane rejected Shayna's advance, but it didn't stop the rumor mill from circulating about a secret relationship between Shane and Shayna even before Shane got left at the altar. A lot of people speculated online that Shayna must have had something to do with Natalie's decision to reject Shane. And then when Shayna introduced Kyle to her family, it became very clear to both parties that their religious differences were an irreconcilable issue for the both of them. Eventually, it was left off with Shayna leaving the Mexico getaway well before their marriage. I guess it was a little less cruel than Natalie's decision to just dip once she got to the altar, but still. Either way though, there's an insane pressure on these people to make such crazy decisions after barely knowing each other, so I see no reason why someone would be so insanely salty about their partner having hesitations. I think it would be a red flag not to be freaked out by it. But when Kyle found out that Shayna dipped without telling him, he stated, quote, Last night, I was taken aback. Shayna decided that she would just end our trip early and go home. I need better communication from Shayna. She's a horrible communicator. I'm going to have to adjust a lot in order for us to move forward with our relationship. Eventually, I'll get more confident physically around her. I'll grow on her a little. Shayna is going to be madly in love with me at the end of it, ready to get married. LOL, big fat chance of that happening. And so basically for Shayna's story arc, within the show anyways, that's kind of how it was left. She didn't marry anyone and left Mexico a single woman. Now that the show is over, however, what's in store for Shayna and the newly single Shane? Well, Shane put those rumors to rest on Instagram when he wrote a long, passionate caption summing up his experiences on Love is Blind. While most of it was about Natalie and his regret at not making the right decision that ultimately led to him hurting her, he did clear the dating rumors swirling about himself and Shayna. Quote, to put some rumors to rest, Shayna and I are cordial and have hung out in group gatherings with Natalie, but we have never had, nor will ever have, a romantic relationship. I wish her all the best. Well, if that's not the most final thing you've ever heard, I don't know what is. It's extremely clear to me that Shane doesn't intend to cross that line with Shayna, even after all is said and done with Natalie, and honestly, I respect the hell out of it. He knows it would unnecessarily hurt Natalie to see them together, and even though those two have had obvious issues, they really did seem to want to work it out. It just didn't. Shayna herself, now that all is said and done, still has her Insta comments disabled, but she seems to be living her best life with buddies and traveling around. Just recently, she was in Greece, and her hairstyling business is back in full effect. Outside of promotional shots for Love is Blind, it seems like she's remained single, as all photos are either her solo or with gal pals. We wish her the best, and I just know that she'll end up with someone who values the same things that she does. And good for her for sticking to herself and knowing that it wasn't the right decision to marry Kyle in the face of what I'm sure was an immense amount of pressure to ramp up the drama and excitement for reality television viewers but no, I cannot marry you. Deep D. Van Patty's Love is Blind season two arc is infuriating. This poor girl was absolutely put through the ringer in her time on Love is Blind season two. Deep T linked herself to Shake Chatterjee, who is most definitely the villain of this season. Although the two got on in the pods and did really well when speaking to one another, 
Once Sheikh met Deepti after proposing to her and they went to the Mexico getaway, he began making disparaging comments about her looks. He even told her directly that he wasn't physically attracted to her. And so Deepti rejected him at the altar. But what's she up to now that the season is up? Well, Deepti's brother is throwing hands at Sheikh online, calling him cringe and a loser, and I feel like I can speak for tons of viewers who definitely want to cheer him on. Today we're covering Deep D Van Patty, Season 2 Contestant and Love is Blind. Tomorrow though, you decide. Let us know in the comments down below who you think we should cover on the next episode of Where Are They Now? And please don't forget to like this video so we can keep on making more content just like it. Now, let's find out what Dee Dee is up to. Dee Dee Van Patty was born in India and immigrated over to the United States with her family when she was young. Graduating from university, Dee Dee now works as an information technology analyst at Allstate and lives in Illinois. That's really all that we know about Deepti. There's not really much about her online. I even went super far back on her Instagram to like 2014, but other than pictures of Flappy Bird high scores, there weren't any super telling details. Anyways, she's pretty successful business-wise, but decided to try out for Love is Blind in a bid to find the one and marry him. Entering the pods, Deepti gravitated towards Shake. The two actually had some really sweet moments together as a pairing and got along really well. It wasn't until they met face to face, once Deep Tea accepted Sheikh's engagement inside the pods, that their relationship started to get rocky. When the big reveal happened between the couple, it didn't seem to live up to whatever expectations Sheikh must have had for his partner because he completely changed as a person. He started talking behind Deep Tea's back about not finding her physically attractive. While I get that attraction is a big aspect of a relationship, a, he should not be speaking ill about his fiance behind his back. Keep those catty comments to yourself. You're an adult for Pete's sake. But also more importantly, B, this woman is beautiful. I mean, like, have you seen her? Her wedding dress is a jaw dropper and she's straight up just like a stunning woman. She was doing charity work by being with Shake. That man had no idea what he had and it's actually so infuriating. Either way, he kept talking about he didn't think she was attractive to the other contestants, and then he just straight up said it to her face that he wasn't attracted to her. I really don't get where he gets off thinking that that's okay. Eventually though, when it was time to marry, Deep Dee chose to reject Shake and she left him at the aisle. Her reasoning behind this decision was because, quote, I deserve somebody who knows for sure that they love me. So I'm choosing myself and I'm going to say no. In a later interview with Us Weekly, Deep Dee opened up about her choice, stating, quote, There's a lot of things that he said that he didn't say to my face and things I've heard from other cast members. I just don't have room for anybody in my life that doesn't see me in the best way. And who could even think those types of thoughts? I guess I knew what I had to do. Deep Dee's confidence in herself and strength not to let herself be trampled over by someone who, for some reason, was willing to marry her despite not knowing if he was fully in love with her really stands in stark contrast to Shake's actions. Throughout season two, fans saw Shake struggle with not having a physical attraction to Deep Tea. In several scenes, he referred to his fiance as his aunt. While viewers didn't see the couple discuss their issues with each other, Deep Tea told Us Weekly that they were, quote, pretty transparent throughout our whole process about how we're not perfect in any way. When it came time for their nuptials, she told us that she was, quote, full of mixed emotions. In the end, she turned him down. Okay, so that's how the show ended. The castmates has been traveling tons and doing lots of interviews for magazines and television segments. Recently, however, when the finale episode aired that showcased Shake's actions, DT's family decided to get involved. The contestant's brother, Sonny, had some choice words for Shake on his Instagram story, and he absolutely did not hold back. Buckle in. Quote, Ooh wee, what a roller coaster of a season. Deepu, we are so incredibly proud of you. We've witnessed you grow into such an incredible and beautiful woman. You've inspired so many people to realize their self-worth and demand what they deserve and settle for nothing less. We wish you didn't pick that clown, but despite his childishness, you carried yourself with grace and continued to see the good in people. We're so damn proud to call you our baby sister and know we're there for you always. Thank you to everyone for their incredible support. We really appreciate all the kind comments and we don't take it for granted. We've read way too many tweets and scrolled through way too many Reddit threads and Deepu is so lucky to have such a massive support system. We are very thankful to all of you. 
Now, normally I don't get involved in drama, but I'm going to defend my sister here. Shake, bruh, you're a loser. You minimized my sister's life by making some awful and cringeworthy comments about her. You made these statements knowing your own mom would one day watch it. My parents and my entire family had to sit through you talking behind my sister's back about insecurities she fought her entire life. Despite your comments on and off camera about her body, she continued to only ever be supportive of you, despite our best efforts to convince her to see through your BS. That's the person she is. In spite of your best efforts to pretend this was all fictional and it was because of an edit, no one is forcing you to say those words. We welcomed you into our home and you saw it as an opportunity for clout. So forgive me if I'm not sympathetic towards you and the hate you're receiving. Good luck with the rest of your life and stay the fuck away from my sister. Let's just take a moment of silence here to recognize how bad ass that was. Okay, moment over. Damn, bro. He read Shake for filth. There's no way that man could come back from that. He's gone forever, decimated. It's really nice to see DT have such an insane support system, especially have such an insane support system, especially since I can't even imagine having to go through knowing that millions of people watched you get embarrassed by a worm of a man. And fans have had similar reactions, with one stating, quote, the biggest demonstration of love I witnessed on Love is Blind was Deep Tea's for herself. I got goosebumps watching this. So, so proud of her for knowing her worth. Now, the reunion episode is airing on Friday, and I cannot wait to see how Deep Tea eats Shake up. I really do hope she goes for the jugular. I mean, Shake's own mother even stated in one scene that, quote, she doesn't deserve someone who gives her even half a percent less. When your own mom isn't even on your side, what else is there to tell you how much of a villain you are?